G'day guys, in this video I am going to be talking about the importance of running an OBD2 reader, in particular the Scan Gauge 2, which is the one I am using. I'm going to talk about why it's important to run one for your touring and towing rig, um, and also how I set it up in the Mitsubishi Triton in particular, they're all pretty um, easy. These ones are really easy, plug and play, literally one end plugs into here, one into the OBD, OBD2 reader in your car. I'm also going to uh, show you how I've set this one up. You can change these to suit your engine size and your fuel tank and, and all that kind of stuff for monitoring fuel usage. And I don't really use it for fuel usage. It is handy if you want to use it for that, but I have the onboard computer which takes care of that. I particularly use it to monitor engine temperatures and transmission temperatures. And with the scan gauge too, you can download some. Uh, you can actually download some codes online on the website for your particular make and model of car and you can input it into there and then you can monitor your automatic transmission of temperature so i'm going to show you how to do that for the mr bishy triton they're all the same just have to make sure you go online and get the codes that are suited to your particular vehicle um, and i'm going to show you where i've mounted it in my unit and that kind of stuff so guys with the scan gauge 2 it actually comes with everything you need including bits of velcro which is what i've used to mount it onto my dash mat uh, it comes with instructions, a, a quick user guide, and also a more thorough instructions guide as well. Now, to mount it is very simple. First of all, you've got to decide where you want to put it. For me, I have it mounted right on my dash. Once you've decided where you're going to mount it, then you have to work out where your OBD2 reader is in your, in your particular vehicle, usually under the dash somewhere. Mine is in the Triton, right in under there, um, right underneath the fuel tank release lever. And then of course you have to work out how to run the cables there. For me, it's pretty easy on the dash and it's right down there. Okay guys, so that was easy. You run this um, run the cable through. I've ran it through into the into the top side of the door seal and it doesn't seem to affect the door closing too much. And there's no actual pressure on the cable itself because it is on the inside and not on the outside where the door actually pushes down. So that's pretty good. I've just put it on top of the dash mat in the corner. Um, with the velcro that's supplied with the unit and I've left a little bit of cable behind the unit just so that when I take the velcro off I've got plenty of length so I can play around with it put in my codes or clear the codes or whatever I need to do without having to reach out so just a bit more comfortable to work with and it all just coils up and neatly goes back on the dash okay finally to the best part about the scan gauge 2 and why I particularly chose this brand is because you can actually go online and get the codes and put it in and then you can monitor your automatic transmission fluid which is very very important when you're off-roading uh, and also when you are towing so pretty simple process really go online find the x gauge commands find your car then your particular model and then what you want to do so that you can see with this one here automatic transmission and a few other things you can find as well anyway so the one we want to focus on is obviously the automatic transmission now take those codes and move on to the unit itself turn it on into you can turn the engine on or you can just put it onto accessories i think i'm just going to turn my engine on so i can get the aircon going because it's hot Now, when you initially get this thing, you can set this up to suit your car engine size and fuel tanks. To do that, you hit the more, setup, and then change your preferences. You can have it in kilometers or miles. We're obviously going to use kilometers. Distance and then fuel, same with liters or gallons, we've got liters. Temperature units, uh, pressure units, we've got PSI, engine size. So this is where you can go up and down. So the Triton obviously has a 2.4 liter diesel engine. So got 2.4. And then the tank size, I've got the 135 litre, I think it's actually more 145 litre uh, tank, let's just put it to 135 for now. Fuel type, diesel, I'm not, the sh I'm not sure the difference between diesel A and diesel B. Uh, I just got it for diesel A. I, like I said, I don't actually monitor the fuel usage on here, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, currency, that once again, just pretty easy to work this thing. You just got to see the button there you know that button does that screen part you can scroll through different things you can do i like to measure the exhaust temperature which is the ext 
Uh, and then the HPR is just horsepower. I've just got that there just to see what it was doing. It's not really something I keep an eye on. ATF is uh, automatic transmission. So that's the one we're going to set up. And this is, I don't know why it's an average, but I usually have that on the water temperature, which is degrees Celsius of water temperature. So that's your coolant temperature there. Anyways guys, so now to the important part of getting the transmission fluid. So you gotta go into more, more, mode, X gauge, edit. And then this is the ATF one. I've already put that in so you can see, you can get different ones. So you can put in all different custom ones, keeps going. But the ATF one, and you get edit. And then those are the numbers. And to input the numbers, it's plus or minus. We'll increase and decrease the numbers. You have a range between 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then A, B, C, D, and E. F. A, B, C, D, E, and F. And then blank. So this was on zero. You just change each letter to suit the button you found on the website. And then you go next. And then it will TXD, the number on the website for TXD. And you go next. Once you've entered all of the individual numbers in, then you hit OK. And we'll take it to the next one, with this one in case. In this case, the RXF, and you put each number in individually, and then you go OK again. Then come to the RXD, put each number in individually, then OK again. And then the last one, OK again. And just give it a name. I've left it as ATF for now. Automatic Transmission Fluid. And OK. And that's just so I hit save. And then exit, and that's it. When you go back to your gauge, you should be able to cycle through and find the ATF like it is right there. So as you can see, that's really easy to put in. Uh, initially I thought, oh, it's gonna be complicated to program it, but it's really not. Just go on the website, get the ones you need for your car, easy to put it in. And now you can monitor live your transmission temperature because um, the automatic transmission if they get too hot that will ruin your uh, gearbox and it's not really a, it's not really a commonly serviced uh, or, or regularly serviced item with modern cars for some reason because but we if you are using it for heavy duty use like a lot of off-road a lot of um, towing in particular then you definitely want to keep an eye on the temperature gauge um, and what you want to do is you want to establish what is normal for your car so every car will be different you keep an eye on the temperature and then you can sort of gauge it that um, you know if you're working a bit too hard you can either uh, back it off a bit change change the gears manually to uh, work a bit better or just pull over and, and have a bit of a rest and, and let the car have a bit of a rest too if you've been towing you know hilly terrains and off-road for a few hours at a time then you, you might want to um, watch that temperature you can see it's getting a bit warmer and it's not cooling down as quickly after you've gone over a hill or something there may be time to give it a rest and also have it looked at and maybe get the oil changed over in it now guys I am obviously not a mechanic uh, but I have found this thing to be really useful monitoring the uh, transmission temperature is a new thing for me uh, I have not been able to do that until I got the ski engaged too so it's really awesome I can finally do that uh, but the water temperature um, you can see on your gauge that the car comes with the water temperature you will just it just won't really move and by the time it moves is usually when it's too late so with the temperature live readout it can you can monitor it to the degree and once again you learn your car you drive it around uh, and, and you know what's normal for your car you know oh, going up a steep hill it'll get a bit of hot but then it takes a few minutes and it cools down again and when you notice it that is out of those uh, parameters when it's not cooling down as quickly on when it's getting to a higher temperature than you normally used to seeing that's when you know that you've got a problem and you should get it looked at uh, and that is actually how we worked out we had a problem while we were towing our caravan in Cape York after six months of towing a caravan around there uh, the thing just got too hot and um, in the end we had to get it towed out back to Cairns and, and had a work done on the cooling um, cooling uh, system in the car to uh, stop that happening again now so guys the ski and gauge 2 costs uh, $270 and I think it's definitely worth it considering how easy it is to set up 
plug and play and um, it gives you so many different gauges that if you were to get them individually it would cost a fortune but most importantly just having a gauge to measure your automatic transmissions temperature by itself is definitely worth the price tag and not to mention the fact that it actually is a scan gauge it's a, it's a scanning computer too so if you have a fault code this will pick it up and it can even uh, clear the fault codes if it's a minor fault code uh, which is very handy because these things do go into limp mode uh, sometimes uh, it can be a quite problem problematic if you're out remote and it goes into limp mode where you're restricted with power and sometimes it can just be an easy as just uh, clearing the code and you're back to normal um, I've had not in the MR but in the MN I had um, I had to do that a couple of a couple of times at random and you know you reset it and that'd be it for uh, a few months and you wouldn't see it again so something as simple like that where you can pick up a faulty uh, a fault from a sensor and then go into limp mode if you can't clear it it can be a real big problem but just having this uh, you, you can you can use it to, to clear the code and also <laughs> use the ga as, a, as a gauge so it's a brilliant unit and for the price I think it's definitely a, uh, a good buy Anyway guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please give it a like and just have a great day. See you guys next time.